All right. Welcome, everybody. This is SharePoint Power Hour. Um, this is our weekly show that uh, my colleagues and I at Rackspace do every Wednesday at 11 Central. Um, SharePoint Power Hour is all about solutions um, that you can accomplish in SharePoint and Office 365 out of the box. We don't go into a bunch of custom dev. We don't go into a lot of hardcore server admin, server logs, or anything like that. It's um, pretty much out of the box SharePoint, and that um, inherently applies to Office 365 as well. So um, we'll all just introduce ourselves, and then we'll talk about our topic for the day, which is project roll-ups. Um, again, I'm Laura Rogers. I um, have been using SharePoint, SharePoint for about 10 years, and I'm a manager of SharePoint Consultants at Rackspace. I've been an uh, MVP for a few years, and I've um, started out as a server admin. That's what my background is, but I enjoy doing SharePoint out-of-the-box things. So I'll, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Ryan? All right. I'm Ryan Keller. Um, also on the business solutions team, I do do SharePoint branding. Um, been doing that for about three, a little over three years now, uh, exclusively. Been working with SharePoint for about seven or so years. So, it's uh, it's fun. All right, uh, Joelle. Uh, I'm Joelle Farley, also on the business solutions team. Uh, I have worked with SharePoint since SharePoint 2007 was released. Uh, and I do a lot of planning and design and information architecture. I work with create workflows, forms, work with search, all that fun, fun, fun stuff. Awesome. Um, Steven. Hello, I'm Steven Wilson. I'm a SharePoint engineer here at Rackspace. I do mostly uh, admin-y kind of stuff, but I do... Uh, some of the information architecture work with customers and I'm for a lot of the presentations here doing things with search on the user side. I've been working with SharePoint since around 2006 and I've been a consultant since around 2006. Cool, and Tavis. My name is Tavis Lovell and I am the business intelligence developer on the business solutions team and uh, I think next week I'm doing the Power Hour, and we're going to talk about Excel services, all the ways you can make Excel services refresh. So be sure and tune in for that. All right. So um, just in general, you guys have uh, the reason. You know, we do this as a live show because we like to get feedback from you, the audience. So we have, um, I see that there are 11 of you out there. You feel free to try out the little Q&A app. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see a little link at the bottom left that says be part of the conversation and it's the yellow thing and you can click on that it'll take you over to a Google Hangout which is where it's got the Q&A app that allows us to um, see what you're asking and answer questions live so I think that there's usually like a little bit of a delay like a few seconds so we don't we won't see your questions until you know it'll take a few seconds I've kind of noticed that recently but um, Feel free to just say hi in the Q&A and just make sure that you that it's working and um, feel free to interact with us. That's what this is all about. All right, so our uh, our solution today is the concept of having project sites in SharePoint and project information in SharePoint. Um, we get this question a lot, which is why we're having a power hour about it. We get this solution needed a lot just by clients. So what um, you know, kind of some some scenarios that we get commonly are people wanting to manage projects in SharePoint. So you want to have you know use project sites or use a list of projects and be able to have files and tasks and things like that associated with your projects. And so um, when we start talking through this with the customer and talking about requirements, they're usually you know, requirements always vary, and there are several different ways kind of this can be accomplished in SharePoint, depending on that. And um, I, so actually a couple of you guys, so one one person that's um, a colleague of ours at Rackspace, just who's just a SharePoint user at Rackspace, emailed me, and um, one of you out in the community emailed me some ideas about some common project requirements. So I thought that was pretty cool. So we'll be going over, I have just some, 
few slides. But we're going over that, going over all these scenarios and idea, and kicking around ideas. So Joelle and I were the ones that were a re most recently part of this call with the client where we talked to them about what they wanted and then sat down together and kicked around ideas about how this would be done in SharePoint. So she and I are going to be doing most of this, like the demo and discussion based on that conversation we had. But everybody, of course all of you on the team and everybody um, watching, feel free to chime in and feel free to ask questions. So I'll go ahead and turn on my little slides here. And why is it not showing on the other screen? A second. My slides always show on the other screen, and then this one time it decides not to. Whatever. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Share the correct screen. There. <laughs> Project roll up in SharePoint. So here are some common requirements that we get. Each project is going to have a set of metadata. So you don't just have a project name. You have project name, project manager, project like deadline, different dates and things like that, status information. That those all, They all vary, but they always have some sort of data about that project. Um, one, one kind, another common requirement is that each project would need to have a whole site around it because you would need to have separate security because just whoever's involved in that project, those would be the only people that would need to be going to that project site. So that's another common one. Um, and then, of course, a lot of times you need to have files, events, contacts, discussions, tasks, all revolving around um, each project. Um, but another common requirement is the need to see one big list of projects. So that's where it starts getting a little tricky, right? Because if every project is just its own project site, um, where are you going to see a list of big projects? And then if you want to do reporting, which is the next one, that there's a common need to do reporting in KPIs off of that list of projects as a whole. So that also kind of throws a monkey wrench into it. So the main thing we're going to be talking about in here is this concept of a project roll-up, which is... Uh, and also the pro project roll, and I'm just calling it a roll down. <laughs> so I'm doing roll up versus roll down. So um, a roll up would be um, just being able to have each project site created, maybe like have a template that you use that has all the standard stuff you need in there, and then have information like the metadata, the details about that project could just exist in that project site. So you would have like a project details um, even if it's just a list with one item, just a place to fill out the metadata about that project. And so this roll-up concept, all the, the files and the tasks and everything associated with every project would just be on the project site and the project details would be just on the project site as well. Um, the concept of a roll down, calling it a roll down, <laughs> is that because of the need to have one big list of projects to slice and dice and filter through and create views and things like that and the need to do reporting off of that, it's, um, it's kind of tricky to have when you do this roll-up concept because then all your data about all your projects is just floating around on all these different sites. So a lot, what I've done in the past is built it so that there's one big list of, a SharePoint list of projects at this sort of top level and then all the different project subsites have information like all the associated files and tasks and things, but they also will just have um, the, that one little record of the project details for that particular project would just automatically display on each project subsite. So the, the main difference between these two roll up and roll down is that the list of projects is one big list with the roll down with a roll up, all your project metadata just exists on all the subsites. Joelle, do you have anything you want to throw in about that um, sort of overview that I did? Feel free to jump and interrupt me. You know I'll just go um, keep blabbing for an hour. Yeah, I don't have anything to add yet, but I definitely, um, I'll definitely interject if I think of any examples and stuff like that as well. Cool. All right, so here, so this is kind of some descriptions about what I just said. The roll-up 
each project could have a subsite, and of course there's this cool new project template, um, project site template that exists now in SharePoint 2013. Of course you could create your own. Um, the metadata about the project, and then the roll-up web part, like this awesome content search web part that we have now in 2013, is what you, you could use to display all the information about all the projects in a single location on the parent site. The thing about the roll-up is that it can, it can display all those project details from all the project detail items off all the subsites, but since you're displaying it in a roll-up, you're not inherently going to get like the interactivity you would have with a list, like with creating views and sorting and filtering and just slicing and dicing it like that. Um, so then, again, the roll down, so you're using the content search web part also for that, but you're just using that on each subsite to display that one record from the top level site. All right, so here are some comparisons. Each project has a set of metadata, yes, for both of them. The site needs separate security, yes, sure, you can do that for both of these. Um, now, if you didn't have each project site needing separate security and its own sort of set of files and things like that, I guess there could be a whole other option that you could do in here, which would be to just have one big single project site and just have all the tasks and all the documents for everything just in one big pile, and then you would have, I guess, like like a lookup like, like that would relate different files to whatever project. But I see that so infrequently that I didn't really put that as an option on here, but because usually people need to have separate security around those, and they need to have more of like freeform collaboration on that project. They need to just be able to whip up discussions and calendars and things like that. And if you had everything lumped into one big site, it would have to be sort of more of a rigid structure where Everything would have to have a specific lookup field to say what site, what project it was related to, and stuff like that. Um, and then for the roll-up, the need to see one big list of projects, yes, sort of. Like I said, it would be sort of restrictive. And then uh, reporting in KPIs for a roll-up, I put no on here. I'm sure that Tavis could probably think of a way to do this, or some dev could think of a way to do this, if the project detail single record existed on every single one of these sites to somehow roll that up and do like a pretty little SSRS report or something off of that, but that would be so technically complicated to accomplish something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I've even I would even delve into that. But I guess it anything's possible in SharePoint, right? With code. <laughs> All right, but you can see how that would be a lot more difficult. All right, so that is the end of my <laughs> big slideshow, and then um, I'm going to go through some requirements. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to go through, I have a demo that I created, and I also have requirements that people have sent me to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my demo site first. Um, and then kind of, the, and I built out sort of the, both of the different ways you could accomplish this. Um, this, uh, this little fun web part here is just me playing around and figuring out a way to roll up everything that's everything that was created with the project site template in your entire environment. I use like the search results web part to just show sites that were created from that template. That, that has nothing to do with the solution, but I um, thought it was pretty cool looking. Um, all right, project roll down. I created just three projects under, well, I created two under this one. I just created a couple because I, I was up to like 11 o'clock last night putting this together. <laughs> and so I spent more time like thinking about the structure of it and thinking about how things are going to roll up and roll down than like sitting there creating a bunch of content. So um, for the project roll up, I'll go over that one first. All right, so project roll up. Um, I have a couple of different, so this is the one where I have project information on each subsite, and then it rolls up to the top level site. All right, so um, you know what? One of our guys just, uh, who was giving me the, uh, who sent in his requirements, he just emailed me and just uh, said he's watching, so I'm going to like let him jump in if he wants to. Let me grab that URL. He's from, oh, what country is he from? Denmark, I think. So, no, SE. Where's .se? 
Stockholm. <laughs> So, Magnus, if you've got a webcam, I just sent you the link. <laughs> All right, so um, for this project, so this is, again, this is the project roll-up. So every project just has their own site, and then it rolls up to one big location. I'm going to create a new site, so what other, what other university should I put in here, guys? Georgia Tech. <laughs> Okay, so these are all pro supposedly projects. I was trying to think of some creative little theme, but I'm not very creative. So I created, and you could do this, a project slash GT or something. And then I created this little project um, roll-up project site for the roll-up. Um, and I'm going to click Create. Um, Sweden, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it create the site, and then it's actually going to be, I'll show you what the site looks like, and then I'll show you kind of how it's going to do the roll-up. So what we would, in, in the real world, when we do this project roll-up, kind of one of the things jo uh, Joelle and I talked through was the fact that we would want it so when, we, when people create a new site, we would want like filling in the project details to be part of creating that new site. I just didn't have the time to like put through the whole workflow around this um, when I was building this last night. But what it would do is let me go ahead and fill this one this project detail out for this single item in here. So I'm gonna say Georgia Tech. Project manager is gonna be Joelle. See, I put you in my virtual machine, Joelle. Nice. <laughs> um have sure the primary contact project start um, hasn't started yet completion date oops you can see it would take a while to sit there and do all this stuff for all these like f fake uh, fake projects um, one million dollars um, and then I, I even put some metadata, manage metadata in here just for fun. I'll just pick something random. And then um, blah, blah, blah. I actually made this um, a, I used a multi-line text for publishing so it gives you like all not just the regular multi-line text where you get six lines but like you could they could put a whole bunch of stuff in here about the description and then the project URL I have to know the URL of that site that just created so um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go up to my so you can see I'm doing some of this manually but I'll tell you in a second what the workflow could do for this kind of um, solution I think Joelle actually even, and I'm going to fill out some of these too, Joelle even uh, built out or tested this whole um, workflow thing that we talked about. Yeah, that I was going to, I probably um, maybe like not next week but the week after I may do a demo on that workflow so people can see that because it is, it's pretty cool. It's a workflow that will build a subsite for you based off of my like just okay. exactly what Laura is doing. So. so go go ahead and talk through kind of what we talked about, like how for the for the roll up, mm -hmm. how you could have put in the project details and have it make the create create the site and all that stuff. Yeah. So if you were that was if you were adding um, the details on a higher level. So if you were adding your details, like you would you would create a project on 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 the top level, mm -hmm. uh, and you would add in the details for it. Uh, and then what would happen is a workflow would run that would create the subsite based on a template, um, and it would just whatever information you put in the details, it it would pull cert like a certain thing for the URL, certain thing for the description, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you could base like if you had multiple different templates, you could base you know you could do like an uh, if statement so that it would it would write the write to the right template. Uh, and then once it creates that subsite. Then you could. We were talking about you could use like show the the project details uh, in that subsite somehow. Uh, we were kind of talking through that. Yes. Yeah, 
the workflow uh, that you use to actually create the site, and that uses SharePoint um, web services to be able yeah. to accomplish that. And I don't know if you have a link that you can share around that, because we found somebody's blog that actually had some good instructions on how to do that. Um, yeah, I can share. There are some missing pieces to that. It actually, um, the, the one link that I worked off of, there was some, the, some parts missing. So I, I can share that, but I would I would probably recommend watching the session I'm going to do in a couple weeks uh, because I can include the thing like how there's randomly two underscores in front of a certain value that you have to have, <laughs> which is not completely mentioned, and you know two under two underscores before something is kind of rare. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. So I can I can go over that kind of thing. But I also okay. share the link just in case anybody wants to kind of get to that first. Cool. So as part of that solution. Um, when you create the subsite, you could also use kind of the same method using the SharePoint services to say just go to this project details list and create the list item in there so that they could be doing the request from one central location, but then when they fill out the request, the workflow creates the subsite and then goes and creates this item in a list yeah. in the subsite. Um, so on it. On each subsite, that's the so that's why it's a roll up because this project details only exist in each subsite. So what I did was I created a content type called project, and then I, um, I just put all the fields associated with the project. And I actually use that in both of these solutions, as a matter of fact. So I'll go back up to my top level and show you that. So I created project. And then I just made up all these site columns. Of course, real projects might have more than that. But um, I made up all these site columns. And so I can take this content type. And what I did was um, inside of each this sort of template I decided to use for the roll-up, I created the project details list. And I made that project content type the content type for the project details. So. Um, so that way you only have to create that all the project metadata one time. Um, and also since it's a content type, if you have to add project, you know, any kind of columns later, it would automatically go into all the places you're using that content type. Um, another thing that I did, which um, was I think the part of some of those requirements I haven't talked about yet, was to have this information about the context. So all I did was this project detail had um, project manager and primary contact as people fields. So I simply added another web part over here um, to the right with just those two fields from that exact same list. And um, the way you show them as a person is, you know, as a picture is, I don't know why those aren't showing right, but it's um, in the settings of the actual field name, like primary contact in the field settings, you just say show picture and details instead of just sh saying um, show, um, what's it called, presence like it does by default. Um, so and then this was the way I showed one underneath the other for the same item was just using the little, just a style, a different view style of boxed. And that's what did that I believe. So um, this is what a project subsite would look like for the project roll up. And then the way the roll up happens is um, I created, I put the Oh, look, there it is. So there's my new one, because I just ran a search index while we were talking. Um, this uses the content search web part. So this is where you would get somebody like Ryan involved, because the content search web part doesn't give you much <laughs> as far as options. So I, um, since I had that project content type that I created, I went ahead and used that as the criteria. So when you do, when you put the content search web part on a page, one of the options it gives you is just to show all the items matching a content type. So I said, on this current site, as in this site and everything below it, I want to see everything of the project content type. And that's pretty much all I did, and that automatically narrowed it down to those three project detail items. Now, what I would want it to do is, uh, right now, when you click on one of these, it takes you to that item. Like, it takes you to that project detail item in that subsite. I would inherently want it to, the link to take you to the subsite itself instead of the project detail. 
but I couldn't figure out. There's one in here called Site Path, but it would it wouldn't work, and so I, you'd have to. That would be another thing you'd have to figure out would be how to make it take you to the subsite, not the item. But um, again, content search. Anytime you're using it, there aren't that many options in here to, to control how it displays. So to make it display any kind of different way than what you see here, you would get a branding person. Um, yes, Kevin, uh, this web part's only available in enterprise version of SharePoint 2013. Um, you would get a branding person involved to create what's called a custom display template. And we actually had um, a guy in, uh, in a Rackspace colleague, Mark Watts, we did, came to one of our power hours several months ago and actually did a demo of, on it was a little sort of nitty gritty CSS and stuff like that on how you create a custom display template because just out of the box all you're getting is like two two fields so I picked the title and the project description so I could pick two fields, you're not going to see them like as columns or anything, you're not going to see them in any kind of nice way like, like you'd see a normal list. So that's definitely something you'd have to get somebody like that involved in to customize it. Um, we have another question from Julie. Julie. Yeah, I saw that one. She said she was leaving. I was going to just address that one in a minute. But oh, okay, sorry. Um, site collection versus um, having subsites. So, oh, I just crashed IE. Awesome. All right, so first I'm just going to do kind of a high-level overview of both of these little demo sites, and then I'm going to go through some of the requirements. And there goes my Internet Explorer. All right, let me close that. All right, so that's the roll-up, and when I click on one, it just takes me to that project detail item, but then I can from there just click project URL to take me to the site itself. All right. All right. So project roll down. To me, this is this is my preference. I like doing this one a lot better because you you have one just SharePoint list of all the projects, and you you're just controlling that list from one place. You can create as many views as you want to, just like any other list. You can have grouping. You can have filtering and sorting and um, all that fun stuff that you would normally get. So um, that 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 concept also just with the whole creation of a subsite. Like Joelle said, you could have a workflow that creates a subsite when you create, you know, one of these new projects here. It would just automatically go generate that subsite according to like maybe the URL that you put in here or something like that. That way it would be more automated. But the idea is that you have one list at the top level and then you just have a subsite for each one. And the metadata about each project only exists at this top level though. So that's kind of it's a it's kind of good and bad. So I can drill down and go, I was trying to make these like the names of reality TV shows. <laughs> I can drill down and go to this project site and now I can see um, my little project summary web part I have and then this is where the project details would be. So what th this is doing a roll down. So I'm also using the content search web part. It took me a good bit to figure this stupid thing out, how to make it show that one record. So. Um, I'll show you how I configured that. Because I only want to see the details. Looking at the site that I'm on, I want, only want to see the details about that one project. I don't want people to have to go configure this web part whenever they create a new project site. I want it to just automatically know which project it's associated with and just this would just be part of the site template and it would just show the right project there. So. Um, First, first of all, I said number of items to show one. There's only going to be one. Here's the trick. This is what took me so long. Okay, project URL was a field in the project, in that project content type. So I had to pick, um, so this is, first of all, um, I started off and this is the default quick mode. I had to switch to advanced mode. And then um, let me click cancel so it doesn't save my, when you, when you do that switch, it like changes your whole query. I had to do, Show all managed properties, and since it's a site column, I created project URL as a site column, it's going to show here as a managed property, uh, just automatically, after search is, is indexes it, of course. So I picked project URL here, so find the item that is of the project content type where the URL of that item is equal to what? So it's um, basically... 
um, site URL. So equals this site. Yeah, so not it wasn't equal. So equals didn't work. I had to do like contains or something like that. Contains this site. Yeah, see the little colon here? Instead of equals, if it's got a colon there, it means contains. So since equal didn't work, I just played around with it till I found something that worked. But I wanted it to just look at what site you're on and automatically show that right, that correct project detail item. So it's project URL contains whatever this site is, and then it automatically shows me the correct item. Pretty cool? I think it's cool. It took me long enough to figure that out that I think it's freaking awesome. <laughs> so, um, and then it's just showing, again, showing the name of the project and then just one other line because that's all I have. But again, for this, you'd still want to get a branding person involved to create a custom display template um, for that. But, but I can click on that item and go to see all the details about it. But you would really probably want to show all the details there on the page. All right, so I'm going to go over um, Magnus didn't decide to join us, but I'm going to go over his requirements now. I'm just going to kind of skim through this quickly. Um, He has, for every project, you, um, they want to have tasks, documents, and a timeline for each project. He asked me if there's a way to have it so that it automatically puts tasks on the timeline. I googled that yesterday, I binged it or whatever, and I found that somebody did figure out a code way to do it. You have to write code. But there's a dev way to make it so that when you add tasks to the timeline, it puts them I had task to list that puts them on the timeline. I just don't have that link off the top of my head. I have to go find that. Yeah, I'll email that to you. Um, so this is this idea that he has of sharing documents and tasks around the project. But um, so each project has a subsite, but um, they want to have tasks rolling up and documents rolling up and a timeline roll up which that's, that's asking a lot. So what we are getting in the solution I created for the roll-up is when you, when you click on like the, the link to go to that project site, that's where you're going to see all the tasks and documents and timeline for that project. It just doesn't roll up. Now, I did accomplish your task roll-up. So all I did here, um, let me go to that. Close this site here. Stop editing. The task roll-up is an out-of-the-box thing that I blogged about um, right here. And you basically just go to your your little built-in tasks um, that, that come in your My Site, and you export the web part and go import it somewhere else. So I just went to my news feed in SharePoint 2013. Joelle, or one of you, can you find that blog I wrote about the timeline, the task timeline and all that? for me and so we can share that with them. Um, it's taking a minute to get to my news feed for some reason. Um, anyway, so I'll just, while I'm waiting for this, it goes, I went to my news feed, just hit export on this web part, and then I can, okay, tasks. Oh, good grief. This is my roll-up of all the tasks that are assigned to me anywhere in SharePoint. I go hit edit page and um, export that web part out and then I go to some other site like I did on this project roll-up site and I import the web part and therefore I can see now by default this is the, that's one of the negatives is by default it's showing me all the tasks and it's assigned to me in all of SharePoint and I have to know to click this little filter to only filter by those projects so that's a task roll-up, but it is just all tasks from SharePoint with the ability to narrow it down to certain tasks from certain sites. I thought that was pretty cool for just like three clicks out of the box, though. Um, all right, so another requirement is going to be um, straightforward. That's helpful. <laughs> I like that. Um,
rotate and place the red part, use to roll up task list. Now keep in mind that you can roll up anything using the content search web part. So he mentioned wanting to roll up all these project documents and things like that up to the top site. That is easy just using the content search web part, especially if all those projects are of certain content type or content types. It's just making it look pretty, right, Ryan? <laughs> so it's just making it look pretty. That's the hard part. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm just sitting there reading this again. I know I've read it several times just to go and figure out um, the best way to do a lot of this stuff. Um, what you're talking about here, Magnus, with um, the whole concept of a content organizer, um, I actually just wrote an article of that for, about that for SP. Tech Web, which hasn't been published yet, but um, we also did a whole other power hour on the content organizer. So basically, if you didn't want people to have to know which project site to go put their documents in, you could create a content organizer little drop location for them to go drop things. They'd still have to fill out metadata so that it would know where to automatically sort things. So I don't know. I mean it might be just as easy for them to just go to the place, go to the site where they're going to put the document, especially if you want them to be able to go look at the documents later or collaborate on them, they're going to need to go to that location anyway. So it, has, it depends on if you don't want if you don't want people to be able to go to the project site, but you want their files to go to the project site, then yeah, using a drop library in the content organizer rules would, would help, but I think that you might have to create a Every time you created a new site, you might have to create a new content organizer rule so to account for things that you would need to get put in that site. Um, I don't think that can be done through workflow. I'm not sure. Um, he said he has a content a content type based on tasks. He has just extra fields that he has them fill out around tasks. Um, he, he said, he mentioned on one of my videos where I prefer to start with a custom list. If you're dealing with tasks or like contacts or something specific that needs to, um, needs to especially be connected to Outlook or something like that, I don't have a, I like creating stuff from a task, con, just the regular out of the box task content type. So I definitely, for something like that, I definitely would not start from a custom list. Um, when I am creating a, now I, I know what you're talking about, when I'm creating a workflow that's like around a business process, which would probably be a lot different than a project, then I don't like to rely on the out of the box workflows, the out of the box uh, task actions to create the tasks for me. I like to do create list item, but I'm still creating a list item in a task list that uses the task content type. So maybe that's what um, we're talking about. Um, but no, there isn't a way with just a workflow and a custom list option, there isn't a way to make them show on the timeline, unfortunately, except for that custom code way. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so he talks about some mobile stuff. I've, I haven't delved into any of the mobile um, mobile ones, but so right here, Magnus, what you talked about was um, these people fields, and that's what I did. Now for this, this worked for the project roll up because I had. Let me flip back over to it. Um, on each site, I as part of the site template, I just put another web part of the exact same list and just put those people's names in there. So that's how you would accomplish that, you know, showing the contact information there. And let me just show you real quick, you know, how to make it show people's faces. I'm not sure why my little web part is not doing it, but um, like this person or group field, the trick here is just to say um, name with picture and details. And so that would, you know, just one of these that would show the person's picture. And then, therefore, when you see that item in a list, it's automatically going to show um, pictures like that. So then in, in a web part, it will show pictures. Um, um, if you did this with the roll down, you could still accomplish that, but again, that's where you'd have to get a developer involved to make it actually show 
the information in a pretty way and actually show the person's picture. And, um, and again, that would, that would have to be custom. Um, I'm not sure about your requirement about metadata navigation not working for the task list. You would think that you could just do a sort and filter on column headings for process stage or just do a, a view grouped by process stage. So you'd think that that would be um, uh, you know, a fine, fine to do that. I've never seen that bug, though, for it not to work. Um, there is an important part in here that um, drop down box on the project. See, what you're talking about here, Magnus, is you're saying, like, I guess on this top level site, someone would pick a drop down box with the name of a project, and then you would get to see all the tasks and documents for that project. Well, to me, if we're seeing on a roll up, if we're seeing all the names of our projects and we're clicking on the name of a project, and it takes us to the subsite where all the tasks and documents are for that project, seems like that would accomplish that. So maybe what you're trying to do would be too complicated for just, as opposed to just going to the subsite when you click on the project name. Um, but for that, I still think that you could um, potentially pass a parameter to you know, your content search web part that's doing a roll up. Maybe. Um, yeah, so content search web part doesn't actually take web part connections, like if you try to connect another web part to it. But if you have a query string parameter that exists, there is an option in the content search web part to look at that query string parameter and then show you data accordingly. So that potentially would be something that you could, um, you could utilize that functionality for that. Does that make sense? Joelle, does that make sense to you? A little sanity check there. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and as far as filtering the timeline, I, again, I, the whole timeline thing, I'm not sure why Microsoft doesn't make it easier to just make things show in the timeline by default. It's kind of silly. So, um, all right, I like your number six here. So he's saying for a process stage, like you have a set of process, a set of tasks that need to be created around a certain project's stage. It would be nice to just be able to click a button that will take and just generate all the tasks that would be needed for that stage. Seems kind of simple. Like it seems like you could just create a workflow that would just do a bunch of create list items. But the trick here is that you would want to be able to have a, a list, like a single place of truth that you could just have these sort of generic task sort of definitions to where if you need to change like the name of a task or, or change a description or change something about it, you would have a central location and then you would want your workflow to just refer back to that central location and be able to spin up tasks according to that and tasks in a big chunk. So I actually, I spent time trying to figure this one out and um, Joelle, maybe you can do a sanity check with this as well. But I tried creating a first. I tried creating a a workflow on a subsite, which would like for my project roll down was the one I tried this on. So I wanted to just maybe have a workflow as part of the template for this this subsite. But I still the trick was. Um, I wanted to be able to have like I created this top level um, task data list and I wanted to be able to take the task data about you know whatever task it would be and go create that task from this information. So the problem with doing that on the subsite is this task data exists at the top level. Another problem with doing it on a subsite is that um, the data about the project exists at this top level. So as soon as I started creating the workflow, you know, and I wanted to have like the name of the project in here with the title, create a project plan, I couldn't do it because I had no information about the project on that subsite. And then when I tried to create the workflow on the top level site as like a reusable workflow, then I didn't have, I don't know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out either way. I kind of, I think that what we'd end up having to do would be to use that whole um, the web services thing in SharePoint Designer 2013 workflows um, that lets you go uh, like right to another site. 
and use the web service to write to another site, kind of like jo Joel and I were talking about using the web services to create a site. So I think you'd have to make it like be able to run it at the top level and then just say like run workflow for um, for a project and then that that workflow would have to go down to that subsite that the project site URL and go to the task list and create <coughs> excuse me several tasks based on the task data in here but then you'd have to have information in the tasks like related to dates that are in that actual project and the name of the project and maybe have things assigned to the project manager and stuff like that so that of course I didn't have time to do that <laughs> in this mock-up but ultimately I think and that would be much more complicated than a normal workflow but I think that's the way you'd have to do something like that so I do spend a good bit of time trying to figure that out um, and then so this this number seven Magnus I showed you how to do that with that web part where I showed the contact names for the project roll down all right I have one more um, this is a, a co-worker of mine Alonzo asked me how to do this and a lot of, most of his requirements were around having reporting off of projects so he said he'd like to have the capability of um, auto updating some some indicators some KPIs and um, showing statuses on this dashboard um, having to do with different milestones and things like that um, around all the projects and then also of course be able to link to each project site and um, and then this thing about Microsoft project I have no idea I don't know anything about Microsoft project but um, I don't think we I don't think we have it integrated with project at Rackspace but Think that that's what that would entail but he did send me this interesting link so I um, wonder if I can share this link with you guys uh, in here is it still showing my desktop when I do this as of right now it is okay I'm gonna go ahead and send you this it says it's loading it takes a minute to share links in here for some reason Shown items, okay, show item. There. Now do you guys see in the little showcase app the link I just shared? Um, somebody in the in the audience just kind of let us know. Um, in the showcase app, yes, I do. Okay, all right. So that's this concept of creating a project dashboard with this JS link. And so I went to this blog post. And I had never heard of this JS link thing, and I thought it was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, I already have it open. So, it JS link is actually a field. Look here in this in this screenshot. It actually shows a screenshot of web part properties. JS link is down here in the bottom um, of your web part properties in a miscellaneous section. I never noticed. So what he did, and this is a custom dev thing. I mean, to me, uh, to some of you, it's just JavaScript, so that's not considered dev. But to me, it's considered dev. It's got code. So I actually downloaded this project dashboard.js file that he supplied. I put it in my um, top le root level of my site collection along with all my master page stuff, and then I referenced it. But it's pretty cool because what he says that he did was he created um, some columns in the project list, health, budget, scope, and staffing. And it's just got it's just a choice field that's got green, yellow, or red. But so the the magic behind this is that just whatever value you have selected, green, yellow, or red, for each of these, it just shows it as an icon. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to accomplish that. Um, let me go back to my project roll down. So I created this product project status page. So up here I have just a regular KPI list in SharePoint. So in 2013. Um, so in previous versions of SharePoint, you used to just be able to like click like you're adding a list or library, and a status list was one of the things that you had as a choice. It doesn't give you that anymore in 2013. You actually have to go create a um, report library, and when you create a report library, then it um, in that report library it gives you um, the ability to create new status. Um, it's it's weird new status list so like let me go to my site contents here and show you so I created a report library 
And then in that report library, I had to click New Document and choose Web Part Page with Status List. So that's how you do that, and it puts the Web Part Page in here, and it also creates a status list on your site, even though Status List isn't one of the templates you get. In my big old blog post that I wrote on all the out-of-the-box web parts in 2013, when I got to the status indicators part, I, I described that and I sent you to somebody's blog who wrote, on, wrote how to do that. Anyway, so um, with, in, with status indicators, you can go define um, just kind of, any kind of any kind of KPIs that you want around any kind of list in SharePoint. So I created one called Late Projects and I created one called Initial Proposal. So Late Projects is showing me um, my goal is 2% and I have 7% my projects are late and it's got a link to my projects down here. And then um, I created one called Initial Proposal and those are just projects that are in the initial proposal phase and what is their average of their value, their, the cost. So since there's only one that's in the initial proposal phase, it just shows that one when I click on this detail. This is kind of what indicators look like. These have been around since SharePoint 2007, but you just point to what list you want it to look at, and if you have a specific view that's already filtered by something, you can do that, like this one I just pointed to initial proposal. And then the, the possibilities here are endless, so I can just say how many items show in this view, like just show me the number of things that are that are in the initial pro proposal stage. I can say percentage of list items in the view where, and I can say like due date is less than today or in, um, completion date is whatever. And so basically I can define any kind of parameters. And then, or I can just do a calculation. In this case, I just did the average of the proposed costs. And here's where you're defining what indicator you want it to show. So display green if it's has met or less than the goal of this number, are better, are better numbers lower or higher. So um, that's where you can define KPIs. And so I only did two, but you could do like eight bajillion on here. You can do all these different indicators around your list of projects. And again, it would be hard to do that if you had every project on a separate subsite. Um, so this right here is the what I did from that blog post. So all it does is it's this little, I'll show you where it is, it's the little JS file that I downloaded from this guy's website and it just takes the value, green, yellow, or red, from each of these columns and just shows it as an icon. So all I'm doing in here is I just put the web part of my list of projects on the page and then I just had to put the link to where that JS file, that JavaScript file is and then magically now when I look at this page all these icons show. Of course, I had to put the icons in SharePoint too. Those, I had to, I had to upload those to a library, the, the site assets library to be specific. I had to go to the root of my site collection and go to site assets and then dump them in there. That's where the web part is looking for them. Okay, so that took care of pretty much all, all his stuff because all these reports and dashboards and things with with indicators can be done with just regular views in a SharePoint list and can be done with these um, just KPIs, just out-of-the-box KPIs. So, um, all right, <laughs> I think I'm done talking now that we've got seven minutes left. Um, jo Joelle, did I miss anything or do you have anything to throw in? I know we were going to kind of do this together, but I just kept talking all the time. <laughs> no, no, it was good. Like I said, I'll do, um, I'll go in depth on that creating a subsite workflow in a couple weeks. Cool. I'm looking forward to that because that, that's something that's really common need for people to do. All right, so Julie, um, I'll go ahead and select this question we have. Julie says um, she's wondering if we're going to address accomplishing the same thing on its own site collection in, in sites instead of site and subsites. Same thing. So, I mean, this top level project site could have been a site collection and the projects could have been subsites of the site collection so all this would work the same way in, in that structure as opposed to this one um, and then even if I think even if all these projects were different site collections 
like if every single project site was a different site collection, since this content search web part goes across site collections, you could totally do, I can't think of anything you wouldn't be able to do with that because like this is just looking for a content type. So as long as all those site collections are looking for that same con use, have that same content type, then you'd be able to do that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to. You would just have to think through. You'd probably have to have like a create like a site collection that's like a portal, like a portal, a home portal for your projects, so that you could like store those um, web parts on there, so that you could see everything from across the different site collections. Yeah, like the community portal. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. um, no questions. We have. Um, this seemed to be a bit really popular when I'm surprised we don't have more questions. 23 viewers. Oh, come on, people. <laughs> Did we tackle and cover every single thing that you came to this session expecting? <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> so project, does anybody prefer a project roll down over a project roll up? I asked Twitter this a couple of weeks ago what people prefer, and I was surprised that a lot of people said they prefer the project roll up to where they have all the data about the project on the subsite and it rolls up to a top level site um, using you know search web parts and stuff which you can do this in 2010 you can customize search web parts with this and there also I did a blog post called uh, web part sites that I have access to and you could instead of sites like I blogged about in 2010 you could do it for projects instead so you can still accomplish this in 2010 it's just not as easy out of the box um, so yeah I was surprised a lot of people said that. go ahead I actually because I see I see the need uh, I see more requirements kind of lead to project rollups than project roll downs and yeah but so many of them are reporting so yeah Reporting is the big thing, like to be able to just see a list of all the projects and slice and dice and do views. And I mean, you would think that that would kind of be a big deal and make people not want to do the roll up one. Yeah. But I mean, maybe in a lot of cases, people just they just work on that project and they don't really care about all the other projects, so they don't have the need to go see them all listed in one place. Yeah. Awesome. I'll just show you guys how I did this web part on the home page just real quick since we while I'm waiting for people to ask me questions. Um, this is a web part that I just said I want to see popular project sites. So everything that people created using the project site template anywhere in my entire farm, I just want to see like a few of them listed here. So I use the content, not the content search web part, but the search results web part just because it's prettier and I show I can see an icon for each site here. So if that site in the um, in the site description and navigation little area in your site settings, it lets you pick an icon for each site, so that's why it's showing those. Um, so that's why I picked that template. So I thought it was a little prettier. So, but my query is, um, I wonder if I could just copy that. And, oh, we've got some questions. Yay! So uh, this is how I did it. This STS web template thing is uh, is project sites of course right five oh five two four five four five four three five four yeah so that's project that's the project site template code um, all right so Carolyn says I have a question separate from this would I work through space in order to utilize you all for an upgrade migration from 2010 to 2013 <laughs> um, yeah I would I would go to our little contact us form but I don't yeah I'm not sure. <laughs> Definitely talk to some salespeople about that, or um, um, maybe I'll ping you on Google to figure that out. All right. Um, Dan says, I may have missed this, but how would you address security at the item level with a roll down approach? So, security at the item level with a roll down approach. Um, roll down. It depends. I mean, for this, if you had to have security on all this actual project data and you didn't want people seeing project data that wasn't relevant to them, and now this is like private information, then then the roll down might not be a good solution. So security is actually a great point 
and that would be a great reason to have stuff in a project roll up. So I usually try to avoid item level security, <laughs> um, but to accomplish something like that, it, that's the that's the only thing way I can think of to do that would be item level security around those items. Um, yeah to be able to have them in a list and then have each item secure, unfortunately. But again, I try to avoid that. All right, it's noon. Um, next week we're going to go over, Tavis is going to do some cool stuff where he shows uh, SharePoint list data in Excel in a pretty like chart and Excel web part and then shows how to make it so that automatically, so that it, the data can be refreshed and all that fun stuff, right Tavis? Are you muted? Yes, <laughs> I was muted. I was trying to, to find the tab. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So uh, we'll be taking a look at how to make your Excel workbooks, uh, like you said, connect to SharePoint data and then refresh periodically, uh, maybe on a set time schedule where they refresh maybe every 10 minutes or every hour or whatever it is that uh, you want them to refresh. We'll take a look at them refreshing immediately upon opening and then also having them refresh uh, manually. Cool. So it should, be, right. it should be good times. We'll talk a little bit about the secure store and some admin type stuff in there as well, but um, it should be a good time. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.